Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1 to 99 and 120 prayer guide for 2019. It is primarily for main accounts, although it might work for Iron Man. What I'll show you in this video are the fast, cheap, and the AFK methods. Here are the XP boosts. Most prayer methods do not work on double XP weekend. These include Gilded Altars, Chaos Altars, Dragon Rider Amulet, Ectofunctus, and stuff like that. There are a lot of XP multipliers that do not coexist with each other, and I will explain this later. There are more to list, but these ones are the most common XP multipliers in the game. For prayer, here are the useful items and unlocks. First Age Outfit. This will give you 6% more prayer XP if you're wearing the entire set. It is obtained by worshipping the Ectofunctus. Every piece will cost you 1000 Ecto Tokens. This is bought from the Shady Ghosts. Don't worry, I'll show you later how this method works. The modified First Age Outfit head will cost you another 1000 Ecto Tokens. When you're either burying, scattering, or using a bone or ash on an altar, there's a 2% chance you can save that. Perfect Juju Prayer Potion. Each dose lasts 1 hour. By using bones on either a Gilded Altar, Chaos Altar, or Cleansing Crystals, you'll get 5% more prayer XP. The perfect plus potion will retain its effects, but not everyone has the requirements for this. I decided to mention this anyways. The Corruption, Salvation, and Harmony auras all have the same effects. They also do not share the same cooldown. You get 2.5% more prayer XP. If you want to add an air rune towards every urn, there is a crafting level requirement for this, although it can be assisted. Killing demons will fill these urns. It will cap at a certain level tier based on the urn type. When the urn is full, you can automatically teleport them, so just go ahead and enable this in your gameplay settings. When it's teleported, it's essentially giving you a 20% XP boost overall. The urn enhancer can boost teleporting urns by 25%. The Bone Crusher costs 34k Dungeoneering tokens, and this requires both 21 Dungeoneering and Prayer. By killing monsters, it will destroy the bones for you. This in turn gives you prior XP as if you were burying them. Ectoplasmator. It's dropped from any ghost, although it is a pretty rare drop. When you're killing ghosts, this will give you prior XP. For the attuned Ectoplasmator, it will cost you ghostly essence. Not only does this work with demonic ashes as well, but it also triggers demon horn necklace. The Dragon Rider amulet will give you 2 times the prior XP when you're burying dragon base bones. Unfortunately, they do not work at gilded or chaos altars. Also, they do not stack with auto sanctifiers either. For auto sanctifiers, they require 70 invention, and you can craft them via invention. When you're either burying bones or scattering ashes, they will give you 3.5 times the prayer XP. It comes with 50 charges each, however. Finally, we have cremation. By killing ghosts, you can unlock this at a really rare drop rate of 1 in a thousand. When you're throwing bones to a bonfire, you'll get 2.5 times the prayer XP as well as 2 times the fire making XP. It is faster than bonfiring, although it can be very very expensive, so I do not recommend this. Before I get into the training methods, let's talk about the XP multipliers that do not coexist with each other. For Ectofunctus, they do not work with any sort of XP multipliers. As I said before, some do not work on double XP weekend, right? However, they do work with other XP multipliers, such as Gilded Altars work with Avatar, Refer a Friend, Outfit, and stuff like that. Last but not least, burying and offering bones are not the same thing. There are various training methods when it comes to prayer. Most of these methods you can get super fast XP per hour even at level 1. This is because regardless of level, you're getting the exact same XP when you're burying or offering bones. I've listed the top 5 bones and ashes I'd recommend, and here are the GP and XP tables. I recommend dragon bones the most because they have the best balance for both XP and cost. If you want to go cheaper than that, you can use Infernal Ashes. While Reinforced Dragon Bones and Searing Ashes give you more per XP than Frost Dragon Bones, they're absurdly more expensive to use, so I would not bother with that. The first method I'll talk about are the Gilded Altars. Ideally, you should attune your house to Taverly because nowadays the Gilded Altars are hosted there. You can do that by talking to any estate agent. In your gameplay settings, you also want to set your house teleport arrival location to either the outside or the inside. I suggest you set it to outside if you're using another person's altar. This is my equipment and inventory setup. 
When you're using Teleport to House spell, you can either use a large room pouch, a runic staff, or otherwise house teleport tablets. Afterwards, bring any reasonable bank teleport, so things like Glory, Wilderness Sword, or the Taco Zo. If you're using your personal altar, you have to bring clean marintals. Finally, just fill the rest of your inventory with bones, although you can bring a beast of burden as well. Nowadays, the official world for sharing altars is World 31 Taverly. Using House Teleport spell or tablet, you'll go to Taverly. In the public chat, you'll see a lot of hosts that advertise gilded altars. After that, right-click and enter your friend's house. When you've done so, right-click and offer the bones to the gilded altar. This in turn gives you a whopping 3.5 times more per XP. Once again, they do not work on double XP weekend. If you're using a Beast of Burden, however, this can make trips last even longer. By taking the Beast of Burden while offering the bones, it will not interrupt the actions. If you're using another person's altar for the most part, the instance burners will almost always be lit, so you never have to worry about lighting them. Finally, just use a bank teleport and come back. However, some hosts do have a mounted amulet of glory, so you can just use that instead. In an hour, you can offer 1,400 bones. Using a beast of burden will bump this up to 1,600. If you don't believe me, I do have a 1 hour footage of this, and I'll leave the link in the description. If you want to build your own gilded altars, this requires 75 construction. You first need to be in a chapel room. By building a gilded altar, it requires 2 marble blocks, 2 bolts of cloth, and 4 gold leaves. Also, you have to build 2 instance burners. They require 2 steel bars each for the basic, but you can add 2 marble blocks if you want to make it look cooler. Either way, all types of instance burners will give you the same amount, which is 50% XP each. If you want the best layout for how you build your gilded altar, just copy people on World 31. The Wilderness Chaos Altar. It is located in the Chaos Temple, which is the level 13 wilderness. A little south of the Graveyard of Shadows Obelisk, you should find this. Using this, there are absolutely no requirements. Just like Gilded Altars, you'll right click and offer the bones. Once again, you'll get 3.5 times the prayer XP, but unfortunately, it does not work on double XP weekend. There's a banker on the other side, and his name is called Simon. If you're in combat stance, you cannot access this. This is really important, and you should always pay attention to PKers. I mean, they don't show up very often, but still. This is the wilderness, so you gotta pay attention. If you've completed the wilderness hard tasks, you can unnote the bones by talking to Harrison. I recommend you bring no more than 500 bones at once because it is a little bit riskier. Because he's right beside an altar, it does make XP per hour a lot faster. Here are the hourly rates. If you're going here without any sort of requirements, then you can offer 1,400 bones per hour. If you've completed the wilderness hard task, however, it is 2,000 bones per hour. Here is the XP table for both Gilded and Chaos Altars. I've also listed the amounts required for 92, 95, and 99. The calculation cost will be posted at the end of this video. Ectofunctus. It's located north of Port Famazes in Mauritania. I recommend completing the Mauritania medium task, and you only want to do this if you're going for first age outfit. First of all, you have to grind bones into bone meal by using the bone grinder upstairs. Ashes however do not require bone grinding. By right clicking the bone grinder, you can set this to automatic. Afterwards, you have to collect buckets of slime. You can do so by opening the trap door and descending a couple of stairs. When you're collecting slime, buckets are not required. Finally, with both bone meal and ashes in your inventory, you can worship the Ectofunctus. This gives you 4 times the per XP, but what's very very important is that no XP multipliers will stack nor double XP weekend. Also, regardless of which bones or ashes you're using, you get 5 Ecto tokens per worship. By talking to the ghost nearby, you can claim Ecto tokens. As you can see right here, this is very slow and tedious. That is why I do not suggest you do this as a training method. The only reason why you want to do this is once again for the first age prayer outfit. I do have a guide on how to get this efficiently, and I'll leave the link in the description. Camping Vires is a prayer combat training method. Although it requires River of Blood quests, I do recommend the following. Soul Split and High Combat Stats allow you to AFK. If you don't have that, that's completely fine because I did this without Soul Split on my Ironman account. 
Mauritania Legs 4 will increase the prayer and fire making XP by 50%. Basically, killing them with Sunspear gives you prayer XP. I suggest melee or magic, although it does work with range as well. Make sure you have 6 Firewatch attacking you at once because this is optimal for kills per hour. Sometimes Vires will lurk elsewhere because people are just doing their master clue scrolls and then just messing up the spawns. Here are the XP rates overall. You can get 350k per XP per hour, but even without Moritania Legs 4, it's still 230k XP per hour. You also get 600k combat XP per hour, as well as at least 5 million GP per hour. I do have a Vyres camping guide for both high and mid levels, and I will leave the links in the description. I know they're a little outdated, but the strategy is still relevant today. With that being said, I highly recommend doing this because if you want to make money while training prayer, this is the best option. Cleansing Crystals. It requires the Plague's End quest complete and 75 prayer. It is located in the north section of Heaven Clan. By buying crystals from the Heaven Monk, it costs you 110k each and it restocks very fast. You'll now use one Cleansing Crystal on the Corrupted Seren Stone. As you can see right here, you're progressively getting prayer XP. If you end up clicking away, you'll lose the remaining prayer XP. For every successful cleanse, this gives you 9800 prayer XP. Not only does this work with Heaven Voices Saren, but it also works on double XP weekend. By having Elf City Quiver 3, this allows you to AFK even longer because it automatically uses another crystal. You can try spam clicking the crystals which will give you 2.1k XP each. I do not recommend this because it's absurdly expensive, okay? You'll use 30 crystals per hour, in which case, the XP per hour you can get is 308.7k or 370k if you're doing this with the voice of Saren. As for cost, that is 3.3 mil GP per hour. If you're 5 ticking, however, you will burn 1200 crystals per hour. The XP per hour you can get for this is 3.1 million, but it will cost you 132 million coins per hour. The next section I'll get into is the 99 plus section. For the prayer cape, when you're offering bones to a guild altar, it gives full XP as if both burners are lit. Using the same recommended bones I did before, here's the entire chart required for 120 and 200 mil prayer. For my XP per hour calculation, I also factored in the first age outfit and the 2% chance to save from the modified head. If you want to get to 120 or 200 mil efficiently, I highly suggest you do Vyres. The Scatter Berry Method Not a lot of people know about this method, but you can scatter and bury bones at the same time. You can use an Auto Sanctifier or a Dragon Rider Amulet. You'll fill the rest of your inventory with bones and ashes. The best bones and ashes to use are Dragon Bones and the Infernal Ashes. So the way it works is that you're going to keybind them both to the action bar. Now you're going to press both keys at the same time. Now this method is extremely click intensive as a whole. You can bury and scatter 5000 of each bones and ashes per hour. Using dragon bones and ashes, here are the XP rates. The base XP you can get for this is 672.5k. However, using a dragon rider amulet, this is 1 million XP per hour. If you want to use Auto Sanctifiers instead of Dragon Rider Amulet, this is bumped even further to 2.3 million XP per hour. You will consume 200 Sanctifiers per hour, however. So you might be asking me this question, Oh Tony, this method is expensive, why bother with this? You're right, it is expensive, but it's slightly cheaper than Frost Dragon Bones. I've talked about the regular training methods, so let's talk about the other training methods. First, I'll start with God Statues, and this is the monthly D&D. There are 4 God Statue locations, although 5 if you've completed the Plague's End quest. By building a God Statue, you can select the Gods for Prayer XP. When you're about to build a God Statue, one of the Gods will give you Prayer XP. Just use the up and down arrows until the scaffold matches. On the top of the screen, you can click the icon, and the NPC will tell you whether it's higher or lower. Building the statue itself gives you Construction XP. Finally, you claim the prayer XP by praying the statue. Nemi Forest is a daily D&D. You'll use the group system teleport in order to get to Mascap. Just create the group and then update the group and finally hit ready so you can teleport there. When it comes to these nodes, only specific worlds have 9 out of 9 nodes. There is a subreddit that tracks this and I'll leave the link in the description. 
By gathering the nodes in the forest, you'll get prayer XP and Gobi reputation. 4 out of the 9 nodes will give you prayer XP. Finally, the prayer ball and gloves. When you're scattering or burying bones in deep wilderness, you'll get 4 times the prayer XP. Unfortunately, it does not work with the Chaos Altar in the wilderness. The best way to use this is by burying the Frost Dragon Bones in the Mage Arena Bank. This wraps up my entire video of my 1-99 or 120 prayer guide. I highly recommend Vyres because they're not only cheap and profitable, but it gives decent combat XP per hour. This is the cost calculation for the Bones and Ashes if you're using the Chaos or Gilded Altars. Either way, just choose which method is right for you and best of luck training prayer. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will definitely be doing more 1-99 guides in the future.